Hello boys and girls, welcome back. So, as by the title, you know what's in here, and so do I. Uh, so, let's start slashing. Ta-da! Oh, okay, okay, so, the tiger moth. Um, I didn't get the one, so basically, this is exactly the same kit as came out four or five years ago, I think five, let's have a look. Tooling 2019, yeah, five years. Uh, but they've relaunched it with two new color schemes. There we go. So if you had the one that came out five years ago, it's just new color schemes, but I didn't. Um, 148 scale, which is uh, not one I've done a lot in. I've done a few 132s. But I seem to have a thing for biplanes at the moment. So when I saw it um, for pre-order a while back, I thought, well, that looks interesting. Never done one before, so let's have a shifty. A little bit on the cover there. 1st of July 1964, four Tiger Moss from Dartmouth Britannia flight land on HMS Eagle, possibly the last biplanes to land on a British aircraft carrier. Okay, so there's a little bit of history on that. Uh, a little bit of blurb there, as usual. If you want to pause it and have a read, feel free. And which one's which? So the A scheme is the last one to land on the aircraft carrier. And the other one's RAF Reserve Flying Training School. Okay. So again, the, the blurb. Uh, if you want to read it. Okay. <sighs> Oh, some bright orange decals there. They're a bit, a bit leery and in your face. Well, I think I might, might have worked out which scheme I'm going for. I like a leery paint scheme. Nice. So let's have a look at the, the options. Uh, Okay, so this one, 1940, little research note. Uh, this one was believed to have been painted in the B pattern, though there were many variations and interpretations of this. It's also believed to have used shadow shading of light earth and light green on the lower wings. So if you haven't seen that before, that's where the lower wing is painted a lighter shade than the top to account for the fact that it's a shadow over it, so it makes it allegedly sort of blend in. Uh, okay, that's quite an interesting one. So a fair old bit of yellow on there. So quite an airy one in itself. Uh, so this is the scheme in 1965. So all over silver. To make a nice change and then paint the yellow but then it looks like the rest is all decals it's quite an unusual scheme weird little stripy bits quite like that anyway <clears throat> meat and potatoes okay so the sort of more familiar kind of recent um, instructions where they do this thing of the last bit goes there that bit is there so you can sort of follow on it's quite a nice little little idea you can sort of see where bits end up um, much better than the old ones There's a fair old bit in the cockpit there 
and sort of part of the looks like you fit part of the sort of well, they be the exhaust pipes I suppose I don't know. Uh, a fair bit of detail in there for I mean although it's 148 it's still quite a small plane so um okay option of open and closed doors so you cut them out if you want to have them open um hmm. this is something we used to do in the old days we used to get a hot knife and cut them out like that um particularly on spitfires cut the little door out. Uh, option of a stand if you want one. Another sort of weird little engine bit there. Okay. It's not the usual slap a seat, well I mean it is there, slap a seat on a bit and then put it in and close it up. There's quite a few little bits to go in there, instrument panels and things. <clears throat> yeah more engine bits there. Or a bracing section, so I guess you can see a bit of it. Oh, yeah, you can see a little bit through that little hole there. Okay, that's nice, not just like a, a simple little block, it's actually got a bit of detail to it. And this, I saw this, I had a look at the instructions for the old one, and I don't know what the, what the thinking was here. But you've got this part is a jig. So once you've assembled the fuselage, you hold that on top or tape it on, but don't glue it. And then you sand or file away the bit in between. And what I can't figure out is why didn't they just make that with that section lower? Because that's where this weird tail bit goes on. Oh, I see, because there's an option. Okay, right. Gotcha. Okay, I didn't see that bit. So you can have that or that. So if you're doing that one, then you sand it out. If you're doing that one, you don't. Right, okay. Um, so which of the options is which? Okay, so that one, you have to sand it down because that's got this weird extra bit. Okay. Um, now, if you're an idiot like me, and you got as far as that, like I just did, without looking through it first, I'd have sanded that away, and then looked at that one and got oh. Um, could have done with that being there, and if you're doing this one, do that. Because it's sort of, although it's got the question mark there, it's quite easy to miss. It, it, if you're an idiot anyway. Um, okay, there's the option of having the the engine flap open there. That's a nice little touch. Oh, okay. Uh, quite a simple wing assembly there. Make, make sure that they're straight. <laughs> yeah, right. <coughs> Not if my... Uh, Biplane by assembly skills are anything to go by. Um, this is interesting. Putting decals on now, if you're doing whichever scheme. Um, before adding parts C20 and 21, before putting them on, put the decals on. Okay, uh, so basically wait until the end for that. Wheels, choice of propellers. Um, that's sort of like a padding bit, I think. And then the screens. I guess that's a, like a leather pad sort of idea. Uh, oh, okay, right. So where you cut the the doors out, if you cut them out, you've actually got parts to replace it rather than use the bits you've cut out. Okay, right. 
Uh, again, you're showing the, the engine cover open. Uh, oh, here we go. Oh, this is this is good. Um, showing you where to put the the rigging. But actually, in quite a fair bit of detail. There's a couple of bits there. Cross wires behind the back seat. Oh, that's really good. They've got some quite good angles of where it goes. Quite clear positioning. Okay. And that's what it looks like. And then put the... Uh, Elevate ones on there. I'm knowing what that'll look like. That's really good. I sort of clocked it on the on the old instructions when I looked, but I didn't didn't think it was this detailed. That's really good. And even even close up of the actual mounting point up there. That's really good. Impressive. And, the, and there as well exact spot where they go whereas on so many of the ones I've I've been dabbling with before it'll have a picture sort of a bit like that but you don't know exactly where it stops you can't actually see the mounting points so to put that in is very very good well done airfix and again there if you've got you know if, if you've got to drill the holes to mount it you can see exactly where it's got to go very good. Impressed. Very, very nice. Okay, and I haven't even got to the parts yet. So let's have a shifty. Just have a quick look at these. I'm guessing, as is the way nowadays, it's going to be fine. It's not going to be anything particularly to moan about. Yeah, I mean, there's, a, there's an example of how small a Tiger Moth is. In 148, that's all you get for a windscreen, a tiny little bit. So it's, I mean, it's there, but that's the fuselage. Diddy. Tiny little airplane. Okay, so part of the engine is already included, you know, as attached to the fuselage. Some nice detail inside as well. Okay. Hmm. Enough to be getting on with. I mean, as you'd expect, there's no flash on it at all. It's um, in lovely nick. And the instrument panels. Let's see that. Let's see how good they are. Catch it in the light. Really, I mean, even like the edges of the dials there with the screw fixings. It's really good. Impressive. Again, for such a small scale. Very nice. And they've done this sort of satiny effect on here as well. And They've made it not absolutely perfectly straight. It's very slight. You can just sort of make out a very slight um, variation across it. Brilliant. Very nicely done. Well, I'm impressed with that. Very nice. Cool. Okay. That's my ramblings over for, for this one. Yeah, uh, well, I'm in the middle of doing this little beast at the moment. Um, so as soon as I finish that, I think I shall crack on with this one. And uh, I think to make life difficult for myself, I'll do this one and have to file out that bit. Might as well, eh? Cool. Right. Well, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.